Is your suffering a part of God's plan and we should let it happen? Or is your suffering an example of Satan interfering with God's plan so we are free to correct it? The problem with Christian theology is, most of the time, you cannot tell the difference. There is a Christian man named Laverne Gooding who goes by Trust in JC here on YouTube, and I've been subscribed to him for a long time because, while I disagree with him on basically everything, he seems to have a very independent and unique view of Christianity, and he seems relatively willing to bite the bullets his theology requires him to bite, which I respect. That being said, He's still beholden to the same basic theology as any other Christian apologist, and this forces him into strange positions just like the rest of them. Most recently, Trustin made a video arguing that cosmetic surgery of any kind is immoral because it's changing the way God made you. A sex change is immoral, but a nose job is also immoral because in both cases, you are subverting God's will by changing the way God made you. A nose job, he argues, is no less wrong than a sex change. As he says in the pinned comment, It is a mistake to say that so long as someone only mutilates their body a small degree, it is acceptable to God, while mutilating it a lot is unacceptable. So I'm sure that you've heard condemnation of the sin of having a surgery to change one's sex. The problem is that these same people who condemn this sin do not condemn something very similar that is widespread within the church community. And I am talking about plastic surgery, elective plastic surgery. Now, before I criticize, there is a point of nuance I would be remiss to ignore. Trustin proposes that a sex change is arguably less immoral, or at least more understandable, than a nose job. Because while a nose job is done for purely vain reasons, a sex change is done to help alleviate psychological distress. I think it's only fair that I do mention this qualifier he offers, but his overall point remains. Now, I respect Trustin's commitment to the idea that we shouldn't mess up God's plan, and I admire his attempt to apply this standard consistently, whether it's a sex change or a nose job. However, he gets into trouble when he starts talking about the devil. Like many modern Christians, Trustin believes that there is another supernatural being, Satan, the devil, who can also make things happen to us, such as birth defects and disfiguring fire injuries, to name just two examples. These conditions, Trustin says, are the work of the devil, and therefore, it is okay for people who are afflicted by these conditions to get cosmetic surgery to change them. Now, I'm not talking about surgery that is done for medical reasons. I'm not talking about the person who has been in a fire and they are severely scarred. I'm not talking about the person who was born with some deformity because of the medication that their mother was taking. The problem for Trustin, and indeed for any Christian with a similar theology, is the fact that this leaves him completely incapable of telling the difference between the work of God and the work of the devil. As a result, he is completely incapable of knowing which conditions we are free to treat and which conditions we should leave alone. In his video, Trustin simply asserts that certain things are acts of God while others are acts of the devil, and he provides no standard for distinguishing between the two. If something as upsetting as gender dysphoria can be an act of God, and therefore we should not change it, then why couldn't any unpleasant condition also be an act of God? If the feeling of being the wrong sex is something God can inflict on a person, then why couldn't God give someone a serious birth defect or disfiguring burns? How does Trustin know that these things are acts of the devil and not acts of God? It doesn't seem possible to tell the difference. It seems to me that the only consistent position would be to say that no cosmetic surgery should ever be performed, because there's always a risk that it might mess up God's plan, and it's probably worse to mess up God's plan than it is beneficial to mess up the devil's plan. This would seem to be the only consistent position to take, given the impossibility of knowing where God's plan ends and where the devil's plan begins.
Fundamentally, this is the problem with supernatural explanations, and particularly with Christian theology, wherein a god exists who is all-powerful, but also morally incomprehensible when it's convenient, and who has an evil counterpart. You really can just make up a plausible-sounding explanation for anything. Is your suffering an act of God? Is your suffering an act of the devil? Both are plausible, and there's no way to tell which one is correct. As a result, there's no way for Christians like Trustin J.C. to determine what we should do in response to suffering. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and if you'd like to see the companion video for this one, you can support this channel on Patreon using the link below.